gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of It's Me Speaking to You. I am, well, as always, your ever faithful host, Mr. Jeffrey Wilson, coming to you from the gateway to the west, St. Louis, Missouri, which unfortunately today, gang, has a bit of a black cloud descending upon it. We will speak briefly about that, but we're going to have on someone today whom I met a while ago and who, um, unbeknownst to him, is, you know, was pretty instrumental into some of the success I had here in St. Louis. He is, uh, he's, an awesome, he's an awesome cat, man. He really is. He is an alumni of the school I went to in Chicago, Columbia College. Um, he's a serious, serious heavy metal fan. Um, he, well, we can, what's the status of Gridiron Records, but he's a part of Gridiron Records. I'm not sure exactly he started that or what the uh, beginning of that was, but we really want to talk about his newest passion and what he really has going on now. It's called MindWriting.com. It's amazing, folks. I, I've utilized it myself. It's kind of a platform for people to get on and kind of express how they write their mind. Maybe not in the conventional mind writing sense, but it's really, you know, this stuff that kind of helps people throughout the day from, you know, not, you know, breaking somebody's neck, you know, or whatever it is, their passions, the things that give them their spiritual equanimity. The creator of mindwriting.com is joining us today, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Timothy Pickett. What's wow. Up, wow. What's up, Jeffrey? How you doing, man? That was a great intro. I appreciate that. I am that. fantastic, my man. I know. I, man, I appreciate you, brother. I I, I, uh, I I, so dig what you're up to now, but to give people a little bit of background on how I met this guy, um, it was I, – I also had a gentleman by the name of Mr. Timothy Michael McKernan on the program of a month or so ago. He's the head of InsideSTL.com, which is doing amazingly cool stuff. Just picked up a, a station on uh, the FM dial. Um, and so I interviewed with Timothy and this Timothy here, Mr. Timothy Pickett and Mr. Timothy McKernan, for the position of photographer for InsideSTL.com. These guys – Enjoyed the cut of my jib, brought me on board, and the rest really was history, man. I wound up being able to do so much cool stuff through that job. I can't even really tell you how awesome it was. And it was really through you too, bro, so I can't even begin to thank you enough, my man. Hey, my pleasure, dude. I, I, I knew the moment I met you in that coffee shop, I was like, this, this is the guy. This is the guy. You <laughs> could just tell the attitude, everything. You had that positivity and you had that drive for success. I could just tell right away. Sweet, man. Yeah, and the rest was history, and I can't, like I said, I can't even begin to appreciate it, man. So, um, obviously, you have, things have changed, obviously, from the Inside STL. You've kind yeah. of moved on from the Inside STL company. Yeah. Um, but you also, like I said, you're really into music. You're really into, obviously, heavy metal and all the different kinds of music, in fact. Yeah. Um, and you, tell me about Gridiron Records. What was your role in Gridiron Records? Yeah, yeah, just to, just to give a little background into it. Um, it basically, yeah, sure, um, you know, I went to Columbia College, you're on Mars. And uh, got a uh, got a degree in music business, um, and uh, um, worked for a couple major labels while I was in Chicago, and I kind of got my foot in the door um, into the to the music industry. And at the time, this was like late '90s. Uh, it was there was a music industry. It was alive and kicking, dude. Like I was working yeah. with uh, w when when artists sold like a million in a week, you know that kind of stuff. Um, right. Like when they were still making money off their albums, making even, I imagine. a ton of money. It was the uh, Backstreet Boys, uh, Christina Aguilera, uh, Britney Spears, and Sync, and all that stuff. Like that age. Right. Right. And um, so I got to get a lot of uh, experience down there. I interned for Geffen Records right out of high school, and then I started working um, at B and G, which is a distributor for like RCA Records and Arista Records, and then. Uh, Moved back to St. Louis and got a job um, with EMI, who's a distributor for like Capitol Records and Virgin. So I got to keep that uh, my music industry dream alive until uh, about 2006. Um, I had met uh, in 2003. I had met um, uh, through a buddy, uh, Kyle Turley, who uh, was St. Louis Rams at the time, offensive lineman, and uh, uh, met a guy that said, "Hey, you need to meet this Kyle guy. You guys are, uh, you know, cut from the same cloth." And so we met up and had a lot of uh, people in common that we knew from bands and we're big, both big metalheads. And so we started hanging out, started playing music at his house at night, just jamming around. And we'd sit around and, and talk about how one day we'd start a record label together. And uh, right around the end of 2006, um, he came one night and said, quit your <laughs> job. <laughs> and so <laughs> so uh, it was great. We started Gridiron Records. 
and um, immediately signed um, three bands, one from L.A. called Indigo, uh, one from uh, San Francisco called uh, The Headless Team, and one from Diego called Onset. And uh, got on, bought a tour bus, and awesome. uh, toured the U.S. just um, uh, with our with Detro, and we toured, oh my gosh, for a year straight, um, just all over playing shows, and it was just so much fun, especially from you know, Kyle's perspective, we were just, uh, we're, we were the business side, but, um, you know, along right, for the right, ride absolutely. as well, you know, so it was, uh, it was awesome. It was so fun. what's the status? Of, does that kind of just kind of run its course? Do you guys still have contact yeah. with those guys or gridiron is yep. obviously still? Yeah. Yeah. So we have, we have contact with them. They all broke up, you know, and right around 2007, 2008, the, the music industry just was flushed down the toilet. Like it, no one was buying music anymore. Um, bands just, you know, anyone can put out an album and so the whole industry was just flooded yeah. with music and it was hard to you know stand out the only way you could do it was touring and touring cost money like a lot of money and uh so the bands ended up breaking up we kind of dissolved for a bit and then around 2010 kyle actually um started playing uh music he grew up like a old school country fan and uh so he got this band together called the Kyle Turley Band and uh, got that going and put out, like, uh, since then, three albums and a few EPs and toured all over playing his, uh, uh, you know, southern rock, country-style stuff. We toured with uh, Hank Williams III. Oh, wow. And we did a couple <laughs> shows. Wow. We played, uh, yeah, that was amazing. And we played in St. Louis uh, five or six times. Um uh, played at uh, the Family Arena, opening up for none other than Leonard no Skinner. No way! So what year was it this? Was, uh, <laughs> yeah, this was uh, probably 2011. Holy shit, that's not too maybe? long ago. Yeah. That's fantastic, dude. No, 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 no. It was fun, man. Yeah, I haven't it was great. Like I said, we, played no, uh, out. Yeah. No, no, no. Guys. Yeah, we we played out in front of. Um, I say we. It's just because we're kind of like all the same as a family. Like I didn't play right. any instruments. I was You're just part of the team, You're part of the uh, team. Yeah. One day we pulled up in front of uh, Edward Jones Dome and parked and got all of the equipment out and jammed out before the season opener, I think of like maybe maybe 2011. And uh, right downtown. It was, it was awesome. Was that? That's fantastic. So, that's just yeah. the story you got, you know, yeah. to tell to your little oh, yeah, man who was obviously a little rocker himself, as I've seen from YouTube or from <laughs> Facebook oh, yeah. videos. That's very cool, man. Very yeah. cool. So, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so you know, right now it's just kind of, uh, it's just kind of, uh, on, it's idling. You know, we well, still, no, as you said, we man, the music business is so, I mean, it's everything anymore. I mean, almost kind of the internet dating back to almost like yeah. the Napster business. And like, it's really, it's been an, almost oh, yeah. an exponential kind of slide since almost the interweb was, yeah. you know, not the beginning of the internet, but since all of this yeah. kind of music uploading and all that stuff. And so the music business has totally changed. Yeah. Um, I had on, um, it was a gentleman, yeah. I, unbeknownst to me, man, I was such a shorty when he, when he lived there, but my next door neighbor when I was a kid, him and his brother, his brother is the costume supervisor for Earth, Wind, and Fire. And this gentleman, Tommy Wells, is the costume supervisor for, like, Barbara Streisand, Neil Diamond, like, all these huge, huge acts. Yeah. So we wound up chopping it up, and just I was asking him about, you know, just the difference of the music business now and how absolutely in – I mean, those guys, Barbara Streisand, they're in all those guys. They got huge dough, so they're not really affected by music sales so much. But oh, yeah. this with, with the whole right, – right change in almost incarnation or reincarnation of the music business like like you said touring is so absolutely essential and you know like your itunes and this yeah. and that but uh it, it seems and you would hope you know the cream would rise to the crop you know or rise to the top i've i've heard cats like yeah. i don't know if you heard of uh, saint paul and the broken bones i mean they're, they're all over these different really talented cats who have almost come out yeah. from this new market if right. you will what do you see i mean you, i know you're you know like i said you went to columbia for music business which is crazy because the business has changed so much yeah. what do you see bro i mean obviously oh, you yeah. know the internet has changed everything so what do you see this next incarnation yeah. being of the music business is it pretty much just everyone's gonna have access to the internet and garage band and be able to record and yeah. the cream will just have to rise to the crop because it is i don't see anything changing this uh, flooding of the of the market or oversaturation, if you will. What are your thoughts? Right. Well, it, it, the the only way that 
that you're going to survive is touring. Like you have to get in front of people's faces. You have to you have to grind. Right. You know, and that's that's the tough part. And one thing that I have noticed is that a lot of these bands that had to break up because of money issues and they, they couldn't afford it and all this stuff. A lot of great bands, they're crowdfunding their albums and they're crowdfunding right. uh, like ways to get them back on tour. And it's yeah. unbelievable. I go to a lot of these sites, Pledge Music and Indiegogo and stuff like that, where you can go. I'll just flip through and I'm like, oh my God, I listened to that band in the 90s. Right. Like, oh, that's so great. And they're like, hey, like, you know. We will fund you. <laughs> we want to put out another album. Like, yeah. And so we're like, yeah, dude, I'll throw in some That's money. Interesting. And that is they'll, fascinating. They'll, you know, send you a copy yeah. or send you a T-shirt. You know, like, that is that is a, that is one of the major ways I've seen that bands are actually trying to get back and trying to be able to do something. And a lot of the times, you know, these bands that have been gone for a while um, put out this album and they get this momentum going and all of a sudden, they're touring, you know, and it's because um, of ways like that, like crowdfunding. Or your GoFundMe. So I have known that that's, yeah, that's one of the major I've, never, I've, I've seen it applied exactly. to different ways, but I never even mm -hmm. thought of it. Like, hey, help fund my movie. Help fund my next album. Exactly. Pledge, Pledge Music is one of the sites I go to all the time, and I just flip through the bands, and if, you know, I, I remember, you know, them, or it looks like they're cool and upcoming, or, you know, a lot of people are like, you don't like, you know, like I'm, I'm, you know we're similar ages. Give me an example of, like, somebody 90s that, that's on there now, because I think that's fascinating. That I might have um, anyway. Filter. Okay. You yeah. know that Filter? They, they sang like, that song, uh, yeah. Hey Man, Nice Shot. And, uh, and they're, you know, still great, still relevant, you know, in, in some circles, and, uh, they put a couple years ago, like, hey, we want to put out this new album, but, you know, it's going to cost this much, and we want to, you know. But if, if you pledge to us, we'll give you the new album, and we'll send out some T-shirts mm. and that kind of stuff. And just doing that, um, they put out the album they raised. You know, I, I forgot what they, they wanted to see if they could raise, like, 50 grand, and they raised, like, 120 grand, like yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. And that extra money they used to get on yeah. the road – to get some merch, da da da, da you know. That is and, so um, fascinating, man. It's just That's awesome. So fascinating. To see. I, yeah. I, ironically yeah. enough, I mean, I, not that this ties in, I guess it might a little bit. I just watched the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the Big Daddy Kane story today, and then you know, I was just watching. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it was so yeah. fascinating, dude. But it was just like with the new incarnation of the music business, and I, I mean, I don't know how. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I'm sure he's not signed to a label anymore. So I'm sure whatever he's doing, it is right. that like grassroots level. Um, you know, going off of yeah. your name and all that stuff. Um, but it's interesting to see it's it's working, yeah. man. It's like it's it's so fascinating to see it's, it's it is. A, and it's such. If you would have said that like five, ten years ago, like, hey, man, you know, your 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 fans are going to be funding your next album. You know, it just would be insane. Yeah. But in in a in a huge yeah. way, obviously, it's cool because you don't have a label breathing down your throat as far as creative direction that they want. You know, timetables and deadlines. You don't need a label yeah, exactly. Anymore. They're almost dead. You just need them. Yeah, you know. exactly. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's awesome, man. I mean, it's just changing so much. Uh, you know, a lot of, uh, if I go see a band live, I buy their CD. Like, bands still make CDs. I buy the CD, and I'll buy, like, a hoodie or a shirt and everything, because that's half yeah. in their pocket. That That goes directly into their pocket. It doesn't go through... A distributor through a label, none of that iTunes, 360 through, deal bullshit. Uh, yeah, none of that. Yep, it goes right to them, and that's that's how they're the band. And that's you money. know honestly that's cool. And I think in my personal opinion, I think now in the next, it's probably already happening. But with with bands being so much, hopefully more creative and be able to maintain creative control without these labels and shit like right. that bringing down the neck. Yep. I hopefully will see like a way better product. Yeah, you will. And you have. I mean, there's a lot of really interesting bands that years ago labels right. would have bought. You know, labels, ooh, I don't know, it's a yeah. little too, yeah. I don't know. You know. And, and that's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, those are getting out there. And, well, and they're, and they're all, and that's the cool part about it, man. They're, they're the masters. And, like, with me, dude, like, with what I'm doing here, on-demand content, or even being an actor, like, of course I still have to go to auditions and shit, but I'm trying to create a brand where I'm trying to make stuff come to me as opposed to, like, going out and, you know, hey, can I, you know. Yep. But, I mean, I think that's, I think that's, it's an amazing change of the game, dude. It really is. And I'm anxious to see, like, yeah. you know, where, where you're yeah. going with 
with it and where the whole industry is going with it. Because I do find it, I find it so fascinating. Like I said, I watched the whole Big Daddy Kane thing today, and I was around when Big Daddy was like just coming up. So yeah. it's just interesting to see the whole oh, incarnation. Love Big Daddy. Yeah, dude, he's yep. a B I G D A W D Y K A N E, dramatic, the Asiatic, unlike many. But I digress. I want to talk about, we're moving away from the music, and ladies and gentlemen, you can go check out, we okay. some, shout out any social networking or anything, where we, where can we find a little bit about uh, Gridiron, before we move on? Oh, you can go to Gridiron, gridironrecords.com, and it is, you can tell that I built that site like eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> It is, it is nasty. It, at the time, I thought it was cool. I mean, it was cool up until a few years ago, and uh, <laughs> it is dated. But funny. it's got, it's got. Uh, you know, if you want to see like the albums we put out, the discography, and you want to see some videos of, uh, you know, that we produced and live stuff um, from Cal Philly Band and uh, Detro and Hair Branch. That's, and that's what I'm all so, about, man. Like I'm building uh, my website for the show, and it's like, man, less is more. All I'm trying to just provide content. Here's where yeah. you can find my most recent episodes. You yep. don't need to see the the bells and whistles of. I mean, mm-hmm. you still want your your website to look, you know, semi professional, but yeah, I mean, it's yeah. really less is more. Yeah, yeah. That really, the content is king. Um, so cool, man. Absolutely, uh, ladies yep. and gentlemen, Grid, Grid Iron Records. Yeah. Go check my man out. Um, so moving on yeah. to obviously uh, you hit me up or I checked it out about a year and a half maybe two years ago maybe I'm maybe I'm uh, overshooting it a bit you uh, you had talked to me about a new kind of a new direction you were going and obviously this just isn't some yeah. just whim you with the nature of this website and what you're doing you obviously put some thought behind it and there's obviously um, you know with whom you're working with there's a lot of um, Interesting, obviously, thought that goes into this. Tell me about what spawned yeah. MindWriting.com and what exactly is MindWriting.com. Okay. Um, a few years ago, um, I, I couldn't – basically, I couldn't take Facebook anymore. <laughs> you know, it was – I was just being inundated with negativity and stuff, and I, I just had to, I had to get off. And I, I, it was a New Year's resolution, I think four years ago. And I was like, I, I can't take that negativity. I gotta, I gotta just chill. You know, I can't. It's, it's a little too much. And so I, I, for a while, I had wanted to create some sort of vehicle where I could put some good news, some, you know, some good news uh, on the internet. Create a, create a website with uh, positive stories where I could share something cool that I saw or share a story that I saw. Move away from the name. And um, I'd of, always wanted away to. away from so much of the. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Just a place where you didn't have to worry about seeing that stuff. And uh, I couldn't I couldn't get the idea down. I couldn't grasp the idea. I, I, I know what I wanted to do, but it just wasn't right. coming together. And there was so much stuff going on. I uh, So many other projects going on. It was just always in the back of my head. And then, honestly, um, like right around, um, I think March or April of last year, I had some time free up and I could sit and think about how I wanted to move forward with this project. And I kept thinking, how, you know, what is this about? What is this about? And I thought, you know, the site is about people talking about how they get their mind right. And so I thought, oh, mind, mind writing. I looked it up domain was available I'm like oh my god perfect I mean like literally the light went off Jeffrey I flipped dude I, I was like this is it I can't believe it I, this is this is it this is what I wanted to do and so um, bought the domain and I know a little bit of web knowledge so um, built the site uh, asked a couple cats for some for some uh, insight on what I what I think it should do I tried I called some people and tried to bounce the idea off them if they thought it was uh, benefit society at all and um, just went forward with it and uh, the whole concept behind it is um, people sharing videos um, of what they do to get their mind right you know this day and age well actually forever people are constantly looking for to see what other people do like you're you know you know, you're you're constantly you read men's health or you watch something and you're like, I want to I want to get bigger, I want to get stronger, I want you know what does he do? You know, uh, this person started this business or 
Um, you, you know, wh how did they do that? Like Why are Tony they successful? Yeah, like what Tony did they Robbins do? says, success leaves clues. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and it's the same. It's the same for you know for health, for fitness, but it's also it also works with the mind. You know, there's a lot of days that people wake up in a bad mood or you know are going through a, a tough time, and the stuff that they do or they have done to get out of that funk doesn't work. It happens to I mean, it happens to me all the time, and so what I want to do is create some sort of platform where people could go. Um, and not only share what they do, but if they don't feel like sharing, browse videos, look through videos of of what others do to get their mind and right. So, and, and honestly, not, I don't mean to interrupt you because it's so very different. You've had so yeah. many, obviously, different videos from all across, the, I believe, the globe, if not the United States. Oh, yeah. It's so very different. Yeah. That's what I think yeah. is so cool, man. At the end of the day, they're, you know, they're yeah, meeting the great. same goal. You might mm -hmm. go to the left side of the river. I might go to the right side of the river. But at the end of the day, we're going to the end of the river, which is our goal. And so it's like everyone kind of might have a different method, yep. but the, the end, end goal is oftentimes the saying of getting your mind right, which is so cool. Yeah. yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate that. And, and uh, you know, basically you can go flip through the videos and, and try to see if something connects with you. And the whole goal is for someone to leave feeling better, right. you know. Or if somebody is feeling good, they were feeling bad and they are feeling good now, they realize I this is what made me – this is what got me out right. of my funk. I, I, I walked through the woods – for two hours and I thought about my family or I did this or I did this or I went on a jog and uh, or I went, you know, I wrote. I started writing right. every day for five minutes and they share that video. It can, you know, spark something with somebody watching it. Oh my gosh, I never I never tried that. Right. Or I never and thought of that. And they see, see, and it in hopefully, yeah, see it in a different way. Yeah, yeah, and hopefully maybe it, it sparks something with them. Maybe it helps them get out of a funk or maybe it helps them when they wake up they start thinking um you know i watched that video of that guy that said uh he smiles when he wakes up <laughs> the little thing or he he, he 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 yells out thank you you know before he before he right. steps out of bed i'm gonna i'm gonna try that no so no you know what that works like that's that's well, cool you know honestly, i mean we're all no, out sorry, here. yeah i'm sorry bro keep, i keep it no no, no, no go ahead i'm you keep interrupting you go ahead we're, no no i'm just saying we're all out to like you know, we're all one. We're all trying to help each other, and 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 I just thought this would be a good outlet for people to share and to listen to what they do. And, and there's there's so much to listen to, man. If you go to the the mindwriting dot com, there's just I mean, it's just festooned, like I said, with so many different examples of what we're talking about. And honestly, I mean, not to even sound like hey, new agey hippie, hey man, but there, I I see you know just because what I choose to gravitate to, I see a lot of people trying to do things to tap into that higher self if you will to to get themselves out of their yep. own way which is really tough to do a lot of times we have so much shit man so much just baggage in the way that really prevents yeah. us from tapping into that higher self so that's why i think something like right. something like what you have is interesting you know facebook is also festooned with all these you know different very you know quote unquote inspirational messages but it's always kind of borrowed from somebody else you know buddha or lao tzu or whatever yeah and that's what's so unique about what you have it's actually people you know and that's a huge thing people getting on camera a is a huge thing but to be able to speak about something yeah. so in depth so um, I, for lack of a better term, kind of spiritually enriching. I mean, it's so kind of antithetical to, yeah. if that's the right word, it's kind of, you don't think about that when you think of internet messages and this and that, because it usually is so right. fraught with just drama and bullshit. And, you know, when you go to this site, you just, yeah. like I said, see so many different people speaking on so many different levels about how they tap into that higher self. And I just think that's, I just think that's so freaking yeah. cool, bro. Yeah. Thanks, man. I, I appreciate it. And, uh, it, it, it is really interesting because, um, like you said, it's not. This isn't like scripted stuff. I mean, it, it it's hard. It is. I know asking someone to sit in front of a camera and talk about that, you know, what they do when they feel right. like shit. Like that's that's tough to do. Like that's very right. personal. That's couch time you know? stuff, and, really. You and know? it's hard. Yeah, exactly. Like you know, a lot of the stuff you wouldn't tell You're, your or best friend. Even like, you know, hey man, you know. It's... When I when I don't feel good, right, this is what right. I do. You know, like it's tough. It's tough to do that. But um, 
a lot of people I know um, have found it therapeutic. You know, like there's there's an example on here of a guy I know from um, uh, I think he's in L.A. Um, or in San Francisco. His name's Dustin, and he did this video, and it's uh, really intense. It's really intense if you watch it. And he's talking about things he's going through, things he has gone through, da da da. And um, at the end of the video, towards the end, he starts talking about how he was diagnosed with Tourette's just recently. And he ex and it kind of, if you watch the video, it kind of explains. You'll, you'll understand when you watch the video when he says mm -hmm. when he says this. And he talks about what it means and what the impact it's had on him and what he's doing to um, to live with it and uh, you know well, is this gentleman and I house? saw him dude he's our age wow, man he's in his 30s and I saw one of the smartest dudes that I've ever met in my life and I saw him you know over the holiday break and I just said hey man I just want to thank you again for doing that video and he's like hey man let me just let, tell you that it was is therapeutic for me um, just doing it he goes I felt so much better after doing it and sharing my story it was like extremely yeah. therapeutic and that was just awesome to hear because that's that is another aspect of, of you know of this of this outlet it resonated you know and with I, I you, it was, getting it was the great feedback wrecking you know knowing that it resonates with people that's got I mean it's not yeah. a pride like hey I did this yeah. but just like knowing on the because your motivation clearly is not about let me pat myself on the back. It's about providing this outlet clearly. So when no. you get that feedback, it's of like it, that's got to be really, really gratifying, man. Be yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. It, it, there is a, another example, no, real quick. Me, uh, I have a guy uh, Kirby in St. Louis. Is a guy I know, and he was like, I told him, "Hey, man, I got this side. Just check it out and everything." I knew he wouldn't submit a video because he's like a man's man, you know. You, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't think he, yeah, I didn't think, I didn't think he'd be down with it. He was down with it immediately. Sent a video. He was like, you know, I'm not, I don't know if I, you know, here it is. I did it. I don't know, man. <laughs> you know, but I don't know. I right, put it up if you want. I put it up and he got a huge response from people on, he posted on Facebook. He got a few overwhelming response. And he called me and said, thank you. I'm so glad I did that. He goes, it was so awesome to see people say, I needed that. Thanks for, thanks for posting that. Right on. Dude, this came at a perfect yeah. time. You know, so just seeing that back and forth was just well, awesome. And it, it was so great to hear him call and say, it, I'm it, glad it I did it. It almost sounds like that kind of represents kind of the old, I mean, it's almost a metaphor for kind of not all of us, but a lot of us. Like he was very apprehensive because – not to say, you know, quote the Fujis or whatever, but you know, we all kind of have the mask. We all kind of have our defense mechanisms. We you know we all can handle it. We all got it. And you know, when when we get to the point of like, man, I I don't have it. You know what I mean? Like, especially guys. You know, very ego driven. Mm -hmm. So it would be interesting. I will watch that video. But it would be interesting to see him kind of work through that process because that's all of us on a, like on more macro yeah. scale. We're all just kind of work through that shit to try yeah. to really to, to open up, man, to let it go a little bit. And it it does help, man. Yeah. It, when you right. when you let shit off your chest, or even it it just is so. And good, again, man, I'm sorry. I don't mean to just keep blowing smoke. I just thank you, man, because it is so therapeutic, and a lot of people do need it. And to see where you started, to see all the videos you've had on, and hopefully even like this, getting the word out will help it grow because it really yeah. is necessary, man. Because the world's on fire right now, man, yeah. and, and and we're very uh, kind of bass actors yeah. of society, so. You know, an outlet like this to um, sure. for people to vent and really keep it real, man, because there's really no pretension behind any of this. Yeah. And it's um... – No, it's, there's not at all. I mean, it's just something that um, I thought would be cool to throw out into the world. I, You know, there's no <laughs> – there's nothing behind it. Trust me. This is just something I've wanted to do for a long time and, and just get this, you know, platform out there to see if people would enjoy it and – you know, it's off, it's off to a really good start, and you know, the more people that submit or visit, um, is is great because then the more people um, that it could eventually Absolutely. help. I mean, you know, 
Dude, even your video. I mean, your video is pro because you're an actor. <laughs> Why well, was like actor. straight out of like That's a movie? So, it took me. It took me a while <laughs> to do that one, but I wound up. You know, it, it took me kind yeah. of. I, I I definitely have my enough of my enough woe to make a video, but I just I felt awkward about it. I I do have to admit. But just one day, you know, I wound up losing yeah. a friend, and I live next to a cemetery, which I always walk through. So I was walking one day and thinking about it, and I'm like, you know what? My mind just was really yeah. now no pun intended. My mind was really right at that moment to do a video. So I was just kind yeah. of speaking right. on that. Yeah, right. But, I mean, you said something. You said we have way more than we don't have. And that has stayed yeah. with me. And, and there, there, just like that, there's bits of every video that has stayed with me that I remember, you know, that, that helped me. And, uh, you know, when I'm feeling like crap. And it's those things that, that I, you know, that will be great if people – remember that, that that helped them throughout the day and that's why i just kind of yeah let's just know, you know we're not alone man. as much get as the we're word going up. to do shit day to day and we don't necessarily exactly. sit and have deep conversation with every person we pass day to day we we do we have more in in common right. with each other than than we have you know you know yeah. in, in opposite and you know and obviously we do have more than definitely we don't it's just a matter of keeping that perspective and finding right. that you know way to excuse me keep that perspective but your your thing's doing it man and um I'm so proud of you for it. So it's www.mindwriting.com. Is that correct? Right. Right. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, get yeah. your mind right. Like R I G. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, and people, please go check it out and feel free. Like I said, if you don't want to submit a video, go check the videos out. And I believe there's also ways to even do it via, uh, if not uh, visually, text wise. You can write in your testimonials. Is that correct? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, people have have written in what they do if they don't feel like, you know, doing a video. And, um, and at the same time, I've been just writing things on there, just, you know, creating posts about things that, that have helped or, you know, music or uh, travel. And I have an article about you know, why I stopped watching the news saw, and stuff I like that. that. And just actually, yeah. anything that I just, <laughs> yeah, I've just been putting stuff out there to, you know, to see if it, if it resonates with anybody. And, of course, I had to get I had to get back on Facebook because that's where everybody is, <laughs> you know. So to get the message right. out there, uh, so the the return to Facebook well, I mean, I feel uh, it's a it's is not great necessary. because yeah, exactly, people are there. Dude. It's like you want you got to utilize all the tools, man. I mean, and especially there, sure. there's so many out Absolutely. there anymore. It's like you don't want to neglect where, like yeah. I said, everyone's kind of toiling yeah. about. But it's you know, um, yeah, yeah. You you definitely yeah. got the bull uh, the bull by the horns, my friend. And I you know obviously in 2016 and beyond, brother. I've you know I've always been a fan and wish you all the absolute best. Um, www.mindwriting.com and grind. What does it say? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Gridiron Records. Gridiron Records. Dot com. Man, yeah, I brother. so appreciate you coming and hanging out with me, bro. You got anything you want to s- Yes, my no, boy. Thank, thank you, you, my man. Uh, but unfortunately, I would let you go, but I can't yet. Until you participate in a little segment on my program that I like to call the Conspiracy okay. Triangle of Doom. It is very simple. Okay. Very, very simple questions, Mr. Pickett, that you you know, must answer, but I would prefer you answer them if you don't mind. Everyone else has okay. three questions. You can say yes or no, or you okay. can elaborate, which we don't mind either. Sometimes spawns a, as I've found in other episodes, spawns a pretty interesting dialogue. But yes or no's are fine. Question number one, are you prepared, my friend? He is prepared, Timothy Pickett. Question number one, do you believe in the existence of extraterrestrial intelligence? Oh, um, I believe that there, there is a possibility that something is out there, yes. We don't want to I say do. definitively, because, of course, we've never seen. <laughs> right. I believe that there is a possibility. Yeah, I'm leaning more towards yes I got you. I got you. Because it is, as I've said before, it would be a weird kind of waste of space to have an infinite universe, but, like, one little dot that just was doing something. Yeah. Super of duper. Course. Yes. Question number two, my friend. <laughs> Along the lines of a little bit more yeah. historical perspective, do you believe in the official version, in the official narrative, if you will, of the events of November 22nd, 1963, 
This would be the assassination of President John Kennedy by a Lee Harvey Oswald with a gun in a window, Texas school, school book depository with the old three shots. And, of course, on the other side, you have your very vast conspiracy, which we've heard so much about. Um, <laughs> I do not believe that Oswald mm, did it. He smells a rat. He smells a rat, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I do not. I mean, I'm not, not that I have some, you know, evidence or information. Uh, I, you just I that. just have a tough time believing it. I mean, I have a tough time believing that. Okay. Well, one of my, one of my here, and no, they'll tell you why. One of my absolute heroes um, was a comedian uh, named oh, Bill God. Hicks, and he does he does a couple uh, bits on the whole Kennedy Classic. assassination. It really opens Classic up your mind bit. about it. And that's kind of what helped me <laughs> change Right on. Attitude. Bill Hicks, RIP, <laughs> man. One of the absolute beyond greats, man. It's weird how we lose, like, the most... Yeah. yeah he was just beyond genius, man. It was crazy. And he died of, I think, yeah. lung cancer. Uh -huh. or cancer. Absolutely. Uh, RIP, mm -hmm. Bill Hicks. Yeah. So, my man's not feeling it, and he smells a rat, ladies and gentlemen, on the old JFK thing. Question number three, and we will let you slide, my friend. Along the lines of yeah. following your narrative, we're going to fast forward about 50-some years, but we're still asking you to, if you follow a narrative or you do not follow a narrative, as far as the events of September the 11th, 2001. Of course, we have our official story of 19 hijackers doing what they did. And then we have, of course, the other side that we've all heard about, lo, these many years. What say you, sir? I knew this was I coming. Knew, I, I, I really did. <laughs> Unless you heard other episodes. <laughs> no, the the Oswald got me. I knew this. I knew this was the next one. Um, I, <sighs> I'm torn, dude, and I'm not like you know. I know. I'm with you. I'm with, and unfortunately, we uh, have to say these but, things before we answer. If we're gonna, if we don't follow the official story, we'll be like, "Hey, I love America now. Don't do me like the Dixie Chicks and shit. I love America." <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know if you've ever watched the documentary called Dyke Of course, Dyke, I have. But uh, okay, I, that was really um, compelling. Mm, it was a good one. Um, so obviously. You have to look at both mm -hmm. sides and then immediately dive on the conspiracy theory. Um, but it did open up my mind. So, honestly, I am 50-50 on it. I, I hate to go right down the sure. middle, but I'm not fully convinced either way on this, I feel on this you. deal, I feel you. unfortunately. Well, it's good that you're willing to at least entertain other possibilities. Some people are so just like... So zealously, you know, one side. It's like you can't even. They're intransigent. No. The word is they just can't pull them. They're just stuck. So yeah. cool. We are a little yeah. a gray area, if you will, on question number three, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Mr. Yeah. Timothy Pickett, man, Columbia <laughs> Col College alum uh. in Chicago, Gridiron Records CEO and creator and CEO of www.mindwriting.com. Ladies and gentlemen, please go check this out. This is it's a game changer, man. I think this thing is an absolute game changer. Please go check it out. Thank you Thank for you. taking the time, my friend. Thank you for participating in the Conspiracy Triangle of Doom. We'll definitely have to link up again sometime down the road to track your progress. It's been my pleasure, my friend. You got it, brother. It's no Thanks problem. Thank me. you. Happy New Year, my friend, to you and the fam. All the best. Continued success. This has been Mr. Timothy Pickett, ladies and gentlemen. This is It's Me speaking to you. Stay tuned for more goodness. Take care, my friend. Thank you for listening to It's Me speaking to you. Please spread the word and subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for more conversations with a variety of guests on a variety of subjects.